Well, hello, everybody. You're well, just in time. Hello, everybody. Look who's here. It's a live audience. Welcome to Torn Tuesday. This is uh, Justin and Cliff. And, and this is Cliff and this is Justin. And and we're Bofer and, and uh, Quick Beam. Quick Beam, yeah. Well, uh, there's, somebody no, there's nothing quick about a Quick Beam because he's an ant and ants work on their own time. Why didn't you take a nickname like... Uh, I didn't take a nickname. Bofer was given to me. Oh, Bofer was... What, is that going to be your new nickname? That, uh, well, that's what this, people keep sending me hats. You can uh, always send us uh, fan mail here at Meltdown Comics in Hollywood, California, <laughs> uh, Los Angeles. We're live from Meltdown Comics, the center of all things geek. If you hear some noise and rattling going on, it's because uh, our friend Justin Willman uh, from, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Cup Cupcake Wars? and, and uh, Oh, yes, Cupcake Wars. Win, yes. Lose, or Draw, I think, or something like that. Um, he is doing his show here tonight as he does uh, every two weeks so they're going to be setting up and doing a little Q&A so we're just going to keep going on uh, what we do big news very big news all week long it's they, been oh they want us to increase the volume level uh, you, you want it to be a little louder you okay want, you want you want noise we'll give you all we'll right. give you more volume how does that, how does that sound i folks? can talk really loud if you want me to how does that sound is that is that a little better haha <laughs> No ads. Don't worry, Stargate Geek. The ads are brief. And besides, the ads help pay for the bandwidth that we use for this uh, lovely ongoing live stream. Indeed. So thank you for clicking on the ads and supporting our sponsors. You know, we were at uh, New York Comic Con this weekend. Yes, and there you were. were a and lot of people that came up and said, hey, I always miss your show live. Uh, why don't you offer it after? Uh, for for watching later and we uh, recently had an email it, people emailing us that too and the answer is we do if if you go to youtube and just search for the one ring uh you'll find many of our interviews with with uh dylan sprouse and sean astin and and, and uh, a variety uh, of oh gosh the celebrities we've had on the air with sylvester and, and uh, fans mccoy and and, and and fans like the happy hobbits and yes and indeed. Uh, we've had some the girls game on the makers and and, and uh, john, fantasy flight game john and, chris felucci the great animator yeah so that's all all the archives are on our youtube channel um and you know if you want to keep up with the latest breaking news, even if it's not posted on the, the website yet, you just go to the onering.net slash live. That's our main uh, constantly updated breaking news, and that's where you can find us here every Tuesday. And in fact, we're looking to expand our, our live stream offerings this weekend. Happy Hobbits are going to be doing their first live stream this Sunday. They're going to be chatting with you fans Oh, really? Uh, that's live. cool. So, uh, check, tune in to uh, to this same place, the oneringnet slash live on Ustream and on the website. And uh, you know, we want to uh, we want to chat with everybody, and we want to get more people chatting and 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 talking with you because you know, Lord knows, I can't talk every day, and and uh, every all of us have busy <laughs> lives, and we're always keeping up with the keeping up and. We'd love to expand. If you have any ideas for hosting a live show, if you think you're uh, a Tolkien expert in a particular area, please reach out. Let us know. Hit the contact us form on the main page of the OneRing.net, and uh, we're always looking for uh, fans that want to do stuff because we're we're just fans. Like we just reached out to a website one day and said, "Hey, can can I help?" And people that raised their hand are usually said. That's, a, that's exactly in. how it works. There, there's not a rigorous recruiting program going on, really, and it would be kind of interesting if we did. But uh, we recruit uh, almost n no one. We we're very happy to have volunteers who participate in the OneWing.net. You know, she Shieldy Maidens is in the chat room saying not all the archives on YouTube. This is correct because a live show can't always be on forever, and uh, certain shows um, we can't uh, keep up permanently. Uh, because this is live and interactive, and when we talk about stuff that might be uh, untalkable, and, yes. and and those you, silly Un YouTube censors, untalkable, um, <laughs> those silly YouTube That's censors. That's funny. Um, and if you if you were paying attention um, it to uh, if you were paying attention earlier this year, actually, uh, I think a couple months ago, um, you would have seen this picture on our live page. You would have seen Bjorn flashed 
in front of the screen ever so briefly. As played by Mikkel Persbrandt. And yes. uh, we, we snuck this in. We weren't supposed to show it. And everybody was screaming, oh, where's the archive? Let me let me see it again. Yes, and, yes, indeed. Uh, the answer is we can't show it. And and so until uh, another website got a hold of this uh, from, from uh, it, it, you can see the spiral binding that's, yeah. here on the right, um, we couldn't technically show it. So that there, that's one of the reasons that we don't uh, show everything live or we don't archive everything on YouTube <laughs> because you guys here on our on our show get a sneak peek at at some stuff once in a while um and speaking of sneak peeks our panel at new york comic-con it went very well I've it heard. was standing room only in fact they had to turn away hundreds of people excellent because excellent. there was well, just no room and no it's, it, it's not excellent for those people who were turned away but i say excellent in terms of the popularity of the content that we provide yes yes and it, it was quite amazing and one of the big reveals at comic-con uh, New York Comic Con was this picture of ah, yes. Bard's daughters, which created this huge dialogue online on our Facebook page. Yes, indeed. And a lot of kind of sneers and jeers uh, from fans at the panel saying, Bard doesn't have any daughters. This isn't canon. Well, Peter Jackson is making his own movie, and not everything's going to be canon, and nothing, er, not everything can be. And, in, and as other fans pointed out on our Facebook page, Tolkien never said he didn't have daughters. There's only a record of the male lineage of Bard's family in the appendix. If he had daughters, it's entirely possible and, and, that and, Tolkien did not list them. And here, here's, here, here's an important thing to, to remember. This is from a, a calendar or a marketing thing. Uh, and and if if you think that uh, that uh, these uh, Bard's family does not have a significant role to play, you don't m marketing people don't put s insignificant characters on. That is true. Merchandise. That's very like, very true. Someone is going to buy this calendar. That they're expecting people to buy the calendars and the merchandise. Yes. Uh, and postcards and stuff like that. So when you've got these two girls here. Uh, obviously, they're going to be playing a significant role because they're just on stuff that you'll be able to buy. And I think that's okay. How did we get a hold of this so late in the game? Is it from the same uh, pre-release calendar stuff that was on... Uh that was uh, on some other... No, this was a different calendar. The, the, the pre-release calendar that we had uh, a couple of months ago, th this is whole different. This is this is a different uh, set of merchandise. Um, and uh, if, if you look closely, uh, you will see that um, these girls uh, don't necessarily look like Luke Evans, who plays Bard the Bowman. They're actually... James Nesbitt's daughters. James Nesbitt's daughters. So Is that uh, true? Yeah, someone in the chat room was just saying that. So my hat is Bofer's hat, and technically those are Bofer's kids. So As, Bo Bofer's yes. been a busy man with another man's wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No so, wonder the men of Lake Town hate the dwarves. Those are both James Nesbitt's real-life children, and they got the chance to be on screen to play... Bard's daughters. We know f we've already met the young boy, um, the young actor who's going to play uh, Bard's son. Bane. Uh, uh, Bane. Um, uh, is it? No, 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 Luke no, no, Bell no. plays. Lucas Bell is playing Bard's son. Um, Bard's son, Bane. Maybe it is Bane. Yeah. Uh, but B A I N. So, uh, so Bard is going to have a more fleshed out. Uh, uh, Oh, family, and there's going to be a lot of, of story stuff. And that Peter Jackson is, you know, as you know, in the original trilogy uh, of Lord of the Rings, hey, he included his own kids. He included Sean Astin's kid. He included many uh, of the actors' kids in the original trilogy, including his own. So yes. So, but they never made it onto merchandise. That's fascinating. Yes, uh, good point. That's a very fascinating point. Making it onto merchandise. No, that's well, a big question. The, the big question in the chat room we has it: Will there be merchandise with Smaug on it? God, we hope so. That's the uh, trick. But here's what this, here's what you have. They weren't a dilemma. allowed to make any more of these. They weren't allowed to make toys and action figures of Smaug because if those toys hit the toy market 
as Toys R Us and other major, major toy chains have the type of distribution where they introduce action figures a few weeks ahead of the time of the film being out, they could not possibly make a Smaug uh, action figure from Bridge Direct and have it be out and available right now before the, uh, uh, before the release of the film. Um, wow, look at that. Are you about to show that? Yeah, I see. Well, you know, uh, now, here, here, here's the thing. If you guys anywhere in the country or any of the other foreign countries or territories who enjoy the OneRing.net, if you're in touch with us and you find a Smaug action figure or anything from Bridge Direct, send that it, happens take to be, a picture. Take a picture, send it to us, send it to spymaster at the OneRing.net. That is S P Y M A S T E R. Spymaster or, or at the just OneRing.net. Find the, the contact us page. You know, this is the yeah, only only. Of preview we've had uh, of Smaug in his full glory uh, and uh, you can see his wingspan is quite wide he's resting on his uh, arms so he definitely uses his his uh, winged arms um, because he is u using those as uh, to, to prop himself up in between so the, the, it's not like a t-rex uh, where his arms are useless uh, so this wow. is uh, you can actually see the shape of his jaws and his mouth uh, the way that it looked in the teaser trailer a, a few months ago where he comes around the corner this is going to be really really fast are, are we watching this now with with all the fans watching this yeah it's 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 pretty incredible so uh, it, yeah it, the, you the get question, a real good look at him the question of whether or not we're gonna have smog merchandise absolutely we will um, and I, it's the one thing I'm most excited about besides seeing the movie is I want the biggest, the most, the best dragon merchandise anyone has ever seen. So how are they gonna get? How are they gonna trick that and get the merchandise into the stores? Smurg is gonna be a pop toy, absolutely. I stole the one ring. Uh, uh, pop toy does those uh, very caricature vinyl toys. Um, uh, well. we, we, so we've got Bjorn, and we've got it's Bayorn. Bayorn, it's Bayorn, Bayorn, and Smaug uh, are going to get the full treatment of toys and figures from from uh, the the collectibles. Are they going to rele release them before Christmas? Right? That's the Absolutely. trick. They want to sell the toys yes. before Christmas, but how do they get them onto the store shelves? after the movie is open on the 13th of December and before the holiday hits. That's a very weird place for the distribution toy people to I be would, in. I would love That's a talking, very weird. talking Smaug put plush. Yes. Uh, here, <laughs> here's, what I'm, uh, here's what we're hearing. That would be great um, to have a talking Smaug toy. From, that, from all of great. our li little whispers at the various uh, licensees and at Warner Brothers, what we're hearing is that um, a lot, all these toy manufacturers and calendars and whatnot, um, they've spent a lot of money, a lot of money on the uh, Hobbit license and making uh, the best dragon merchandise and everything. And one of the key reasons that you've seen the dragon in both trailers, and now that you've heard the dragon in trailer two, one of the key reasons that that Smaug is not being kept the secret and is, is is wide open from the get-go wide open everybody's seen the dragon everybody's heard the dragon we're going to see more and more and more of him because the 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 the, the, ma the merchandise people are saying everybody's going to be wanting to buy dragon merchandise and you're and you have to let us show it you have to let us show it and as soon as the first smaug toy hits any shelf the the, the whole thing's going to be out so Warner Brothers kind of put in a predicament of what you know yes, the, fan, quite, the, quite the a fans were the fans were begging to be kept the secret and save it for the big screen mm -hmm. and all the merchandise people are like look it's Christmas time we have to move merchandise we're talking Thursday Black Friday the day after Thanksgiving we we have to be moving all of this merchandise sell 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 we spent a lot of money on your movie making toys and figures and stuff you have to let us sell it and if you're going to keep the dragon a secret we're not going to be able to sell it so yes. you're going to see in in a lot of the toys or us like holiday catalogs and everything you're going to be seeing dragons everywhere the dragon everywhere um 
So we will get the merchandise before we get to see the film Dragon. So this It's absolutely going to happen that ab way. Absolutely. If and, you guys and, don't want spoilers, you're going to have to avoid Toys R Us and, at all costs. And what I'm hearing That's is really that it. That's Peter the answer. Jackson didn't want to show the Dragon. The filmmakers didn't want to show the Dragon. If you and if you carefully watch the trailers, both trailer 1 and trailer 2, you'll mm -hmm. notice it, the Dragon feels like it was tacked on at the end. Like the trailer has a conclusion point. Uh, both both trailers have a conclusion point, and then there's this added extra scene featuring the dragon. And what uh, what I'm hearing is that the filmmakers themselves wanted to do some fan service and not show the dragon, but the Warner Brothers people and all the licensees and toy manufacturers were saying, "Look, get the dragon, get ahead of it, get the dragon," because uh, nobody want it, like all all Mattels and all the all the toy figures and the board games and everything. They don't want to be uh, get in trouble by the fans. Um, for spoiling the dragon. So well, this even, is a pure business and merchandise reason that you've seen the dragon. And where have we seen a filmmaker and a studio make film decisions based on merchandise? Star Wars. Bringing it back around to that conversation yet again, Justin. Let's just put this in let's perspective. Put, let's put it all towards <laughs> Star Wars. Like, let's sell as many toys as possible. Uh, the, never mind the fans, and I, never mind the filmmakers, and what makes a great film? No, let's sell toys. Selling toys is one thing, but the other thing that I get when, I, when I'm watching these trailers, both the teaser trailer and the brand new one, the same thing comes to mind. It's not that the dragon was tacked on later as an afterthought, but it's the idea that the, the dragon was darkened and that they digitally changed the image so that the dragon would not be quite as strongly visible in full light. He was darkened a lot in the teaser trailer and that's why we had these other people show uh, you know, an image where they had gone back and recontrasted it and showed the dragon in a much lighter, lighter playback. So that's really, really fascinating um, to me that these, uh, that these these dragons have to be on the marketplace. You're right, the toys have to be sold. The companies got the license at a very, very big price tag to get that license and make those toys. So, you know, they can't be, they cannot be in a situation where they're denied the chance to put the dragons in the marketplace. And, so, and this is, the, 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 uh, circling back to the, the pressure from uh, the, the license holders to sell merchandise. Again, mm -hmm. um, it, it, let's 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 just be honest. The unexpected journey didn't live up to expectations, uh, both on a complete uh, fan uh, orgasm of a movie. It wasn't as good as the original trilogy, and the sales of the toys and figures did not meet expectations. And even we didn't sell as many tickets to our Oscar party because the movie wasn't as good as the original trilogy. So all the so there is a lot of pressure from from people that have paid tens of millions of dollars to, to manufacture toys that have been sitting on inventory for characters that were supposed to be released a year ago. Legolas and Tariel, remember that the, these characters have been sitting on toy shelves in back rooms of Walmarts for over a year and they haven't been able to they spent all the money making them they haven't been able to recoup that money this explains why warner brothers and all the license holders have been uh have have cracked down on the one ring.net as you can see this is the one ring.net emporium of goods and sundry somethings uh i believe you came up with the name uh at the shop mm. the shop dot the one ring.net shop dot the one ring.net and we've been having a great time. Again, all of these designs for t-shirts and posters have been submitted to us by fans. Uh, we haven't designed much of anything. Fans actually have sent in designs to say, hey, I love what you're doing with the shirts. Would you please consider this? And all of these designs uh, were basically designed by fans. And a lot of these you've seen on other websites. The, the Hobbit's band shirt was amazing. Uh, uh, Why So Precious came out like four years ago when the dark knight was hot uh so you've seen a lot of these even the game of thrones shirt which is sold out we don't have it here um so warner brothers under pressure from all the all the license and merchandise people have been Indeed. saying we have to we have to re-edit the trailer to appease our license holders and 
are the fine folks at like Hot Topic and some of the other t-shirt store uh, t-shirt manufacturers that are doing cool uh, Hobbit themed t-shirts. They're like, why does the One Ring get away with no license fee? And they're obviously, uh, you know, I see. flying yes. in the face of of the 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 merch that we've paid dearly for, which starts off at fifty thousand dollars. I mean, look at this sold out smug shirt. Uh, you know, we've got Misty Mountains and the Lake Town Fire, even the Eye of Sauron. All this stuff is, it, it, you know, it can be copyrighted. It, 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 it kind of not be copyrighted. So there is a reason <laughs> that we're getting pressure. And so that's why we've had to, t we're, we're, we've had to take everything offline. Um, and we have until the end of the month, uh, graciously. I mean, Warner Brothers could have sued us. And whether or not we would have won or lost... We don't. We can't afford a lawyer. That, that's that, true. That's all there is to it. We that's we just true. can't afford to defend ourselves. Whether whether we're right or wrong makes no difference. We can't afford to defend ourselves. So Warner Brothers could have sued us out of existence and and taken all of our money and and taken all of everything that has kept the website afloat and allowed us to go to all these conventions. Yes. But fortunately, they said <laughs> very we love you guys. We love the fans, and they acknowledge that the fans have been very creative on their designs. They said we don't want to necessarily affect that. So uh, until you guys sell out of all of your shirts, you can sell online through the end of the month. So to that point, Warner Brothers has been very gracious, and we appreciate their patience and appreciate letting us. They said we couldn't sell it. We couldn't sell any of the existing shirts at Comic-Con or New York Comic-Con or everything like that. So that's why you didn't see a lot of shirts. You saw a lot of other stuff at our New York Comic Con booth, which we'll talk about in a minute. So No, it, no it, don't have the misconception that there are no more t-shirts from the One Ring.net. We're, we're, don't think that. That's not the absolute extreme end of this little problem. At, at uh, the, uh, as, as, far, as, far as, as far as we're concerned, the end of the month is it. The end of the month is it for those designs that were actually infringing on possible license. Issues. Well, according to them, because of the close relation of the One Ring .net to the Hobbit franchise, the, the legally um, we could we be, just because of our name, the One Ring .net, uh, we can be considered uh, confusing in the marketplace. Oh, really? And the the fine folks at you know places like Hot Topic, like like I mentioned, I mean they make some amazing T-shirts. Uh, there's already Hobbit T-shirts. For sale, Hobbit Desolation of Smaug T-shirts for sale at Hot Topic right now. Of great, fantastic designs and quotes, they look great, and I want to get a few of them. But marketplace confusion is what it all comes down to. Okay. And because we're so closely affiliated, uh, you know, it, so at the end of the month, that's it. That's all. And we're after the end of this month, after or until all the shirts sold out and as you as you saw like a lot of shirts are selling out pretty quick yes they are um, that un until they sell out uh, you know at the end of the month we're gonna have to figure out another way of making money we're really not making t-shirts anymore period that, that that's it that's all I unless mean, it's our logo unless it's just our basic logo the one ring dot net nothing funny nothing fancy nothing nothing hobbit related nothing no, no jokes no you know allusions to anything that has to do um, so, interesting. It's not greed. Brighter, brighter moon, brighter moon. It's not greed. It's uh, look. Okay, you have you have Warner Brothers, the Saul Zans Company, and the Tolkien Estate. You have three entities. Okay, There's, they split the pot. One, two, three. Thirty percent each. Okay, so they all have to sign off on everything. So, companies mm. like Denny's, who made an awesome menu, Air New Zealand. Who put a big sticker on a plane and sold ho holiday packages? Yes. Cryptozoic Gaming, which makes amazing games. Uh, uh, Hot Topic, uh, The Bridge Direct, uh, Weta Workshop, Sideshow Collectibles, Gentle Giant, um, uh, uh, Toy, uh, you know, Pop Toy. Uh, there's so many cool um, merchandise out there, but they've paid a lot of money, a lot of money, <laughs> to, to to be able to make that stuff. Because at the end of the day, J.R.R. Tolkien uh, created all this stuff, and his estate has absolutely the right to be the sole monetization, to, to reap the rewards of creating uh, this world. And, and they've partnered with Warner Brothers Saul Zance to, to make that happen. So 
you know, at the end of the day, look, if, if we if we well, could come up with fifty well. or hundred thousand dollars to pay for it, then we'd love to, but we can barely keep our servers up. Yes. So fascinating. We are going to not have these types of t-shirts available. So yes, so you it, streamer it, it, 065999, yes, that means you need to buy your t-shirts now. Is a, this is the last chance to yes. get any of those. And you know, we've, we, 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 we've, we've done many shirts over the years. Uh oh, they fell down. We've, we, we've done many, many shirts over the years. Oh look, there's quite a few here down here. Yeah. Well, look what we have down here, guys. A fascinating and it's, stockpile it's of not, shirts. It, it's not just what you see on on uh, on the website. I mean, there's stuff on the website that that we don't have anymore, like dwarves. The the baseball yeah the New York uh, baseball Yankees. design. Yes, of course. Dwarves. That, was, that 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 was a great one we did for for New York Comic Con. Yeah, there's some in that bag right there. Oh um, yes, I see. Like, uh, uh, like the one you're of wearing. Of course, everybody has Vote Bilbo. Um, again, we can't offer this for sale because it says Bilbo and it has a picture of Sting. Those are both copyrighted, uh, copyrighted um, hmm. things. The Eye of Sauron. We've got uh, over the unique uh, spoof of the Shepherd Fairy design. Yes, Obey can't do and, that anymore because the Eye of Sauron over Barad-dur is. The, the Eye of Sauron. Is the Eye of Sauron. It's very specific. So it, I it, get it. Well, it, it, It's the Eye of Sauron. Now, uh, a lot of these designs, like Obey Sauron, um, uh, technically uh, is, is seen as parody if you release it for free. Now, this is the big difference when you saw the Shepherd Fairy uh, Obey poster. Uh -huh. It went all the way to the Supreme Court. It, because because the photographer that took the original source image of President Obama sued Shepard Fairey saying because he reappropriated that photograph re, he reappropriated the pro photograph and the Supreme Court of the United States said that he wasn't monetize he wasn't monetizing it he wasn't making money you could da he offered the image for free he didn't charge for the image right uh, I see you could download it for free on the website all the campaign posters that you got at all campaign headquarters across the country offered the poster for free so um, the, it wasn't in the marketplace for sale that's different than selling t-shirts you know we've got uh, one throne to rule them all this was a very popular shirt and and it's on many websites right now um, and you know it's only a matter of time Game of Thrones and, and <laughs> yes uh, Game of know. Thrones combined with Lord of the Rings hey, two big properties you know how about Batman and combined with Lord of the Rings why so precious Gollum in Joker makeup I mean yeah. that's it's you know we we had we had some amazing amazing things another why so precious you know how about the the the, the this one technically is a okay like we could argue this in court but if if I could afford a lawyer we could argue it in court but I can't even afford a, you know we can't even afford that um, you know of course hello Pete hello North Runner and the hobbits this is your <laughs> last chance to get get the hobbits these shirts are on sale course, until the end of October or until they sell out until, or until they sell out until they sell out you know this is all over first off it says the Hobbit in big print yes in big right? print yes uh, it sure does this Elvish script uh, Tolkien created Elvis script he wrote it himself he's famous for that you right? know I you so, know I, I, uh, I do see I do see the irony of the situation brighter moon yes and I also wonder how much it equates in promotional value what the one ring dot net has given them in terms of solid ticket sales the, the, it, I appreciate that and I, I guess that's and you they know, do too and that's why they, they appreciate it too and that's why they didn't smack us look, down so hard they, yes so they, they kind mm. of turned a blind eye because for you know, gently gently gen gently yeah. <laughs> but like Superman, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the Tolkien estate that was mad over the Super Smaug shirt. It was the Superman people. It was DC They're Comics. Like, DC Comics, which is owned by Warner Brothers. Yes. The Superman people were like, Holy smokes, this is like obviously the Superman shield. How dare you? Like, where's our cut? Right. Okay? <laughs> so we had to immediately take it down. So at New York Comic Con we, we debuted this shirt, which says smug. And it's a dragon with a very <laughs> smug look on his face. <laughs> isn't, yes. it, isn't that a great look? It's uh, wonderful. This is a great shirt. And uh, again, it was our exclusive at, at New York Comic Con. Um, and, and, you know, uh, 
technically, this is A-OK. -okay, because smug is just a word in the dictionary. It's not a name. It's not a tech. It's not a yeah, It's not a copyrighted and, name. You know, and and, and parody protects uh, an original drawing of a dragon. This is not a dragon based on the trailer. Not or, based on any other or, design or anything like that. And so. Peter's dragon, I guess, was well. Peter's dragon was a spoof on the Disney film Pete's Dragon. And it, and it was but, uh, the the source image again was based on the, the dragon. The eye. eye. The eye shown at the end of an unexpected journey. Well, let's just see. Um, you know, the, 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 this eye, they loved it. In fact, many, many people in New Zealand, in Wellington, ordered this shirt online. Cause yeah. Because I, uh, I ship, you and I ship most of the shirts, so we've had to address many labels and draw a lot of pictures on a lot of envelopes. To a lot of a, international fans. A yes, lot of absolutely. people in Wellington bought this shirt uh, because... Well, because they, they they couldn't get anything like it. This was the only image. This is an original Photoshop. It's n it's an original drawing. It's not directly taken from the trailer. This is inspired by the trailer. Yes. What was the only shirt that Weta had that was official Hobbit shirt at Comic Con this year? It was this. It was basically this. It was a screenshot. It was from a the screenshot. Trailer. It was the only one they were allowed to make. It Weta, was the only one they were allowed to make. Even the designers and wonderful artists at Weta were not allowed to do any other even, even revealing guys, designs. Yeah, even the and guys, I can I can tell by looking at the iris and the pupil uh, that is not the same dragon eye that you see at the end of the film. I can even tell that. You know, stuff like um, this again. Dragon Con is fantastic. It's uh, it, this is an original. Isn't that from? Yeah, this 2012. Is, That's from. Uh, this is the Road to Dragon Con shirt. Yes. Um, it's a, it, it should be good, but there's a ring with Elvis script on it. You know. There is a ring. Oh wait, does it have? Yes, it does. Same it does the have the exact party. Elvish script. This was available available to people that came to our Oscar party. Yes. And, um, you know, it's 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 got a ring on it. Uh, so I thought I so originally funny. thought that Duran's folk. Family reunion was a okay, but guess what? Durin is copyrighted because Tolkien created Durin. That's right. I get so it. So the, I get the that. entirety of the shirt is a okay, except for the fact that it says Durin, Durin's folk family reunion, which totally defeats the whole purpose of the shirt. So <laughs> we only have a few of these left. Literally, I think there's like uh, eight left. Uh, so. If you want one of these Durin's Folk shirts, you got to get it now. That's because that. D that's it. That's it for Durin's Folk. Same with Lake Town. We thought we thought this was good, but the Warner Brothers lawyers said Lake Town is copyrighted. Lake Town, when it is hyphenated and put together in that form, mm -hmm. is a copyrighted so this, specific place, Esgaroth. Yeah. So th th this this shirt. Uh, everything is good, just like Dern's Folk, except it says Lake Town. If we took it, if we took off Lake Town, uh, we'd be in the clear. But that However, defeats the whole purpose. This version of Lake Town was a little bit more acceptable because there's uh, a graphic separating the word lake and the word town. They're completely separated. But this isn't the exact design. Was it this a prototype? Didn't we redo this design with yeah. a little bit of a dragony shape and in the so middle? There's, there's a dragon in the middle. So theoretically, we should be able to. to uh, th this one's in the clear, but we'd have to argue it in court if we want to do it. Now this is a, this is one that got us some trouble, uh, actual trouble. <laughs> yes, I do. What can Brown do for you? Which is an absolute steal of and, the UPS slogan. Yeah, absolute. Yes. Just we didn't even try. We didn't even change it. But what we did do is. Uh, we created an original piece of artwork um, mm -hmm. that I drew with a sharpie. Uh, this is before <laughs> we knew what Radagast was going to look like, so his hat is wrong. And we put a raven on the top, and we reversed the, the UPS logo. So, um, you know, it could be argued parody. They could be argued parody because there's nothing hobbity, there's nothing hobbit related. Uh, except for an original drawing of Sylvester McCoy with the wrong hat. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we but, didn't even know what his hat would be like, did but, we? But Warner, uh, but UPS were the ones that, that didn't like that. Uh, Boy, I would love to have seen that letter coming from them. And how about uh, Misty Mountains? Now, technically, no, Justin did not draw any of these. Technically, Misty Mountains 
is a spoof of Coors Brewery. Coors and Miller um, and Misty Mountains are two unique words. They're not original words created by Tolkien. But when you put them together? Well, when you put them together and Misty Mountains, uh, you know, so. Yeah, th th I get it. I th get it. This one hasn't sold as well as, as all the others. So we have a, we have a lot more of, of these than, uh, than, than most of the other ones. This one, I mean, we have a lot more Misty Mountains shirts. Raiders of the Lost Ark and Stone. Everything about this shirt is awesome sauce. Yes, it is. It's really for awesome. Except the word Ark and Stone. Warner Brothers said Ark and Stone. That's our. That's a copyrighted word, an original created entity from well, J.R.R. Tolkien. There doesn't exist an Ark and Stone in real life, except in Middle Earth. So Raiders. What about that New Age artist? Uh, that new age artist and instrumentalist, uh, what's his name, David Arkenstone? He put himself out there uh, with that name. I wonder if they're going to yeah. shut him down too. So Raiders of the Lost Arkenstone, and again, this shirt is all good except for the word Arkenstone. And that co totally defeats the whole thing. This shirt, we got <laughs> explicit permission <laughs> from <laughs> Daniel Falconer. Now remember this, this was our con exclusive in 2008. Um, and this was... Uh, this was uh, a custom drawn by Weta artist Daniel Falconer, and I'm going to go up there and hold it up closer. And 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 we only have a few left. And if you search on the One Ring we do have a few uh, website, no, let me see, let me see, tell me about it. It's here. fine, it's fine. If you search on the One Ring, um, you can see uh, old posts with with that dragon. So <laughs> wow, well. So and this is only a few of them. We've got. We've got several others over the years, like uh, wanted, they're, hearing, they're hearing a lot of static. Are you hearing static? Wanted one evil wizard. Still getting static. Well, I'm sure it'll be just fine. We'll we'll adjust that cable and just like that. There you go. No more static. Um, well, yes, I know. Uh, I know David Arkenstone has been in business for a very, very, very long time. Thank you. I know. I know they're not going to shut him down, but oh, tons of static. Okay. Okay, we will fix the static as best as we can. You guys hang tight for just a second. Hmm. Still static? Yeah, let me, let me go fix that. Okay, he's gonna go fix that, and I'm gonna Thanks. talk to you guys. Um, no, they were hearing the stock before I stood up. It's, it's always got to be my fault if I step on a wire or a cable or something. It's definitely got to be my fault. <laughs> well, static, 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 worse. Thank you, guys. We will get that fixed in just a second. Hang tight. Now... Does it sound better now? It's gone. Yes, fixed. Thank you. It's good. Yay. Yay. Come on in, Jelly Bean Benitez. All right. Come on in, Jelly Bean Benitez. So, <coughs> so that's what's going on. That's a sample of, of our, our history of shirts. And, and, you know, this, this all started uh, in 2002 at our first booth at San Diego Comic Con. And we had three shirts. Uh, wanted one evil wizard uh and uh all i got was this lousy shirt um <laughs> that's funny and and there were a few others so we've done many shirts over the years yes, and we uh, have. they've all become kind of collector's items because every every convention we go to every time we meet up with fans uh they say man i still wear my shirt um yes they do so so i it, so again uh shop dot the one ring dot net is your last chance get most of these and that's that that that's it that's all uh you know until until we can figure out uh, some sort of amicable solution um where the uh the folks at you know the the warner brothers and all the license holders that have paid a lot of money um to to make shirts that you want to buy it is understandable um it is understandable but still i like big books and i cannot lie couldn't we just continue selling things like that yeah, those are the things that don't even include yeah. anything that is specifically Tolkien. So so a lot of it can be argued. Yes, well, that is very exciting news.
brighter moon is coming to Dragon Con next year. Your first time in America. No, my friend, uh, it'll be a great experience. It will not be scary for you. You will have a wonderful, wonderful time. So, I promise you that. Now. So you you actually uh, went on a little adventure while we were mm, in New York, didn't you? Yes. Well, you, you went to uh, the the Hobbit. There is a restaurant. Restaurant. There is a sleepy, sleepy little town called the City of Orange. Well, it's not sleepy at all. It's a rather busy and bustling place. The City of Orange, which is way down there in the heart of Orange County, um, <laughs> as if you couldn't predict that. There is a restaurant there. Let's let's take a close look um, at this beautiful front entrance. The uh, the restaurant is not specifically Hobbit related. Uh, there aren't things in the restaurant like pictures of dragons and fantasy artwork and and a Gandalf staff in the background. Haha. Ha. Mm. You know what's interesting? You go there to the Hobbit restaurant in the City of Orange and you will be treated to a three-act play where they take you down to the wine cellar at the beginning of the evening and they have I mean it's like Downton Abbey. They have so many servers <laughs> running around like Downton Abbey making sure every little perfect little thing on every table is exactly so and they serve champagne that they make there themselves. They have thousands of bottles in the wine cellar and you're allowed to go down there and tour the wine cellar, meet the chef, have unbelievably good hors d'oeuvres before they take you back upstairs with special wine pairings that go with your meal and this is like top chef, incredible, delicioso. No one can anticipate what a seven course meal is like. They bring out... So it's a pre menu. It's a pre fee menu, absolutely. It so is it's one price and you... you one price and, and you, includes it, everything. Kind of like at a wedding. And they hand you that menu. In fact, here is my menu. Want to take a look at what I ate that night? Really? And look, yeah, here's the menu of what we had I'm at the so Hobbit restaurant that night. I have a menu. This is fantastic. The first, the first course was the champagne and the hors d'oeuvres down in the wine cellar. Then we had a spice-crusted uh, uh, diver scallop. The first seafood course was a scallop in this beautiful vegetable fettuccine. And then the next course was a light fowl. It was a duck leg with risotto. Blew everyone away. And then there was a third course, a big Napoleon salad with this tarragon goat cheese and to fresh tomatoes. And it was nuts, I tell you. Amazing, and you know, there's nothing on this menu that it says ho it has has any no, Hobbit. No, there are, stuff. it's not gimmicky. There are no gimmick themes of dragon names in the dishes. You know, there are it, no dwarf names in the dishes. I mean, the the, the stuff that you're being served is what you'd expect to find at a starred Michelin starred restaurant, like the best dining in the world. It's on East Chapman Avenue, and you know That's what else? That's right, right off on, the 55 freeway. You know what else happens down there? WonderCon, the last couple of years, has been mm -hmm. right there. Right like, nearby. Down, down the street. Down in so, Anaheim, yes. So if, if WonderCon's going to be in Orange County this year, this, next year, uh, maybe we should We uh, should arrange a, a special thing. Well, yeah. when I was there uh, visiting, I talked to the owner and the, I met the chef. They were very excited uh, that we were there talking about their restaurant. But the only reason why they started the name of the restaurant, The Hobbit, way back in the 70s, was because they love Tolkien. That's all. They didn't want a gimmick restaurant filled with, you know, swooping, you know, bats and, and bunny sleds running around the restaurant. It's very, very nice. There's a dress code. You've got to wear super nice clothes, like when you would go to the Magic Castle. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get to this seven-course meal, I mean, they kick you out, send you outside to have a cigar and a glass of wine, while they reset all the dining room tables, and then they bring you back after intermission for a light sorbet that cleanses your palate before they bring out the main course. And you think Chef Gordon Ramsay knows how to make a beef wellington? Well, you haven't had this filet of beef en croûte. I'm telling you it was amazing. And the dessert? Oh my gosh, there was an apple tart, a beautiful hot apple tart with creme fraiche. They paired it with a, uh, um, a, a wine, a wine that is called Chateau Ségur du Clos. It's a Bordeaux. It's the most popular Bordeaux wine in all of Paris. And it was as dry as powder, the driest white wine I've ever had. And it matched perfectly with the flavor of that dessert tart. The, the, it really, was amazing. The it only, was so amazing. How does it compare to the Hobbit Cafe in Houston? Um, it's like comparing, well, it's like comparing Norm's Diner to, like, 
you know. It's like comparing the the, the Shire to what? We have the Shire to uh, 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 we have Mandel? we have a little bit of ambient noise because they're uh, preparing for a show down as, there. As we warned you over the uh, at, at the beginning yes, of the show. Yes, as we so, warned you at the beginning so of the show. So it's kind of like if the Shire, the Green Dragon Shire, versus the the finest Riv Rivendell has to offer. Yes, it's and, it's like having you know a, a little old pork chop and a roasted potato at the Shire ver that. versus what the elves are serving in Rivendell, which is haute cuisine. So let me just say, it's on East Chapman Avenue. It's in the city of Orange, and how much California. I think that it is about um, uh, $170 per person. Per person? I think. Reservations I, required? It might be 70 or $76 per person. It, including the wine, it might be 170 per person. And it is reservations only. You'll have to book months in advance. They're amazing people, and they just love Tolkien, and they named the restaurant uh, after the, the Hobbit. The Hobbit Restaurant in Orange, California. And this is not a paid uh, recommendation, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind a free dinner for more publicity. I, I, I'd, I'd love I'm to do a, uh, do, a, do a live special show well, uh, from The Hobbit. You know what? I love The Hobbit Cafe in Houston. It's in Houston, right? Yes. Love The Hobbit Cafe, uh, but they have, you know, a family-style... Casual, very casual dining. They have Bilbo's banana shake. They've got, yeah, they've got Bilbo's <laughs> banana shakes and they've got salads and sandwiches and basic everyday food. But you go to the Hobbit restaurant in Orange, California, maybe once every few years because it's that exquisite. Now, I mean, I've never been to anything like it in my life. Anyways. That's incredible. You know, what else happened this week is that I Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch did has a become... a Reddit AMA, which is an Ask Me Anything. And he did the Ask Me Anything in relation to The Fifth Estate, because obviously he's playing Julian Assange from WikiLeaks. He's actually had six movies this year. He's been the this It is, Boy. This is the 2013. He is the year of The year of Benedict. Absolutely. He is the and he really Hollywood It Boy. Anything. And if, and if, you, if, if you go to um, uh, Reddit, um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's, yes. uh, the, the, there's an entire meme around <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch looking like uh, otters. An otter. Yeah, he looks so, very much like an otter there. But if you if you go to it, uh, you know, he talks about Ted Danson and Oscar party going freaking out over or, or meeting him. Yes, um, he met Ted he, Danson and freaked out. He, he, uh, he totally um, uh, credits Martin Freeman um, with increasing his sass uh, and whether he was always this sassy. Uh, but there were a couple things that he said where, that just got all the fans uh, in a tizzy. We're going to review the Reddit. Uh, you guys, if you've ever do an Ask Me Anything AMA on Reddit, that is your chance to do even better than tweeting with a celebrity. It's automatically getting a response in real time with everyone else asking him questions. He this is, this is a, really an open door interview for everybody. And, and, and he is saucy. And he was answering anything. <laughs> ultimate uh, a fangirl, a fanboy thing. But the, the thing I want to key in here is that if you've been following uh, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch over the last couple of years, uh, he's only been in New Zealand for <laughs> one film, and that's The Hobbit. Right, and The Hobbit. He was he was originally only scheduled to do voiceover. For the dragon and for necromancer slash sauron yes um but then they put the motion capture suit on and he's he's uh, officially done a lot of motion capture but uh, what they didn't tell you is whether he was doing motion capture for sauron and the necromancer or if he was doing it for the dragon i think it's more from a necromancer but this is an important quote here he says on an untouched New Zealand glacier. Well, we'll have to talk louder. We're going to talk louder to make sure you hear us. I stepped out in trainers, jogging pants, and got out and danced. On an untouched New Zealand glacier via helicopter, I got out and danced. Why is the necromancer on a glacier? Dancing on a glacier. Or Sauron, if he's playing the physical embodiment of Sauron as Sauron is getting his power, why? That that is, is an excellent question. He what if he also glacier. What if he also filmed as Anatar, the giver of gifts? Anatar was when Sauron appeared to the elven ringmakers in fair form, and they didn't realize it was Sauron, and Anatar tricked them into ring making. And that's how the rings got made in the first place. 
he taught them the craft of making rings of power. That's fascinating. But so, I don't uh, think are, I don't think they're going to go back way back in time and show any of that footage. Well, they did show the making of the do? forging of the rings. They did show in, some of that in the original trilogy. Yes, they did. They did. They showed Sauron pouring his own ring right in there. So my question to you is: Is, is, are, is there any reason? The static is back. Is, well, is there any reason that uh, Necromancer or Sauron meets anybody on top of a snowy mountain? No, maybe they just stopped there to let him stop there for the sake of it. So, wait a minute, that would be expensive. You know what? It doesn't make any sense for the helicopter to stop somewhere where they were not designated to stop. If it wasn't for the film production, then why would they stop there? Because one of the fans in the chat room suggested they were just stopping there for fun. Right, Sirsha? Maybe? Uh, uh, Shirsa. Maybe, maybe they just had, uh, um, a reason to stop to let him have some sightseeing, but I've got a feeling that, um... Well, would they legally be able to include any of that? If they, you no, know... No, I... But, th but they did show the forging of the rings uh, mm. at the beginning of the original trilogy. Anything is possible. It is possible that we might get a flashback that shows... Benedict Cumberbatch playing Anatar. And but maybe Peter Jackson maybe. is completely maybe. deviating from everything, and maybe the rings are being forged. Uh, Ooh, uh, maybe they don't have the rights to that. Tedarus is very smart and observing that maybe if if the name of Anatar, the giver of gifts, doesn't really appear in the appendix of Lord of the Rings, they would not be able to use it if it was a Silmarillion only name. You know? Right. So Terrib terrible static. <laughs> terrible static, they say. Well, what can we do about the static? What, 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 what can we do? We can let you know that the, uh, the we've found out that the premiere of The yeah. Hobbit will Oops. be in Hollywood. Yep, moving on. And so we we're in the we're we're in the very first start, very first stages of uh, book, putting together our premiere party. If you were with us in New Zealand last year, you saw yeah, you you saw that to Peter Jackson, Eliza Wood, Jed Brophy, and a bunch of people came to our pre-premiere party for fans and by fans over in New Zealand. And yes. it, 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 there's a ton of videos on YouTube. Uh, from fans that were there at, at the uh, the One Ring uh, premiere party uh, in Wellington last year. Well, now it's in Hollywood this year, and right we're down the road, do, we're from gonna where do we it, are now. We're gonna do it big. It won't be as big as the Oscar party, of course, and uh, costumes are encouraged. But we're putting the final details together. Uh, but you'll want to be here in LA the first week of December. Yes, the very first week of December, probably a Monday. Uh, and you'll be able to stand on near the red carpet and and the celebrities will all come down and sign autographs for everybody and then we'll have a party together and and be all excited so that is what's going on and uh, we'll have more information as we get closer to the date so this is a good time to uh, Exit out. We've got exit music. We have exit music, but I want to make sure you guys... Oh, yeah. Well, really bad static, everyone? Well, sorry about the static. Sorry about that. But look at the story we have on the front page of... Of The Wandering. And... <laughs> wow. Okay, wow, it works. Thank you, guys. I think your sound check works very, very good. So let's just say, guys, have you sent the prizes out yet? How no prizes? Sent the pro oh, Stargate Geek. It's not a prize. It's a Mavum. I'm sending you a Mavum. And no, I have not. And let me remind you guys that anybody who's in the California area, northern or southern California, mark your calendars for. December 2nd. If we have the party on the 1st, we think the premiere is going to be the next day on the 2nd. 
So we're not trying to schedule this party on the same night as the premiere, well, but the day before. Maybe two parties. Who knows? Maybe who knows? Hell, but so. you'll want to be in LA. And you want to start planning yeah. ahead. And you'll of time. want to bring your costumes. Yes. And everybody's going to be here in Hollywood. The Happy Hobbits will be here. Most of the staff of the One Ring will be here. It's going to be yes. It'll be quite exciting. Fun. So we hope you enjoyed our live coverage of New York Comic Con this week. It was really fun bringing you can, the panel. Can I congratulate you? Everything. May I? And I have to acknowledge you. That was great coverage. You were no, on. No, no. You were you on. Were, you guys were on. It was everybody fantastic. was missing you. Everyone, I know. I know that. Was, was, I well, almost everyone was missing me, but you were fantastic. Congratulations to Justin for helping put on a really great U stream. Uh, the Torn After Dark was delicious. And it was and, a pretty good know, party. We, wasn't we it? had a lot of fun, and and if if, if by supporting the one uh, through T-shirt uh, sales and and the many other ways, and, and buying a ticket to our parties and stuff like that, you help support the one Because I want to do more convention next year. Next year, 2014, is the last hurrah for Middle Earth fandom. No more movies, no more nothing. So I want to be as, at as many conventions as possible yes, and, and give, giving uh, the latest updates and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to keep doing this. And, you know, if, if you have ways of, of helping out, if, if you have uh, in-depth articles and analysis that you want to write and post, please send it. Uh, hit, yes, reach yes, out indeed. to us on our Contact Us page at the one ring .net. Um, and, and you know, just find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and shop.theonering.net. And uh, that's oh, it's been it's been a busy week. And it has been a very busy. You you have survived going across country and across time zones over and over and over again. It's so crazy. It's very impressive. And, and we're gonna keep we're very gonna keep, we're gonna keep doing Thorn Tuesdays until uh, and they can't take our cameras away. Well, maybe they can. So until next week. I'm Justin. And I'm Clifford, also known as Quick Bean. Follow us online. Follow us on Twitter at the One Ring Net, And you can follow me at QuickBean2000. And no Oscar party in 2014. The only party we're doing around the movie are, are line parties in every city and the premiere party here in L.A. Uh, but no, no official uh, Oscar party next, next year. So till next time, stay tuned. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Goodbye, Static Kings.